Darren, welcome to the first episode. Thanks for joining us. Thank we're branching you. out here at Long Branch Homes, one of our key sponsors, and this is their brand new housing estate here on the Headland. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's stunning. Yeah, it's a nice day as well, which which always helps. But yeah, you can see a lot, a lot of lovely houses. And the view behind, stunning. It's not bad, is it? No, Should we buy right. a house after this? Yeah, we can do. We need a new house for new players, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? We're, funny enough, is when you look at the residentials that we have for the players, and, and again, it's a big selling point, especially if you're trying to get, because a lot of players, when you're negotiating, you know, negotiating with, you're, you're looking at it, they're always looking at accommodation. And the houses we have, to be fair, are, are, are fantastic for that. We're going to have a little chat. Yeah. We're going to have a little walk around. You'll be able to see all the construction got on. We've got our high vis on. We've got our, our hats just in, yeah. just in case. But we wanted to film a video. We wanted some communication to the fans to assess the pre-season, assess the 23-24 National League campaign that we've got in front of us. And I suppose, firstly, we should probably say, how are you? How is pre-season pre going? How has your Good. summer been? Chance to yeah. relax yet? Or? No, no, and, and especially now I'm in this game, this side of it, probably about five years, so one of the things you, you don't do is go away effectively in the pre-season. Because a lot of people I've spoken to, they, they seem to think that when the season's over, you know, that you down tools, you relax. It's, it's actually quite the opposite. It's very intense. And I've done a, even a couple of interviews because, you know, you have, you have people here Sporting director roles becoming such a big role, director of football, technical director, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people get in touch regarding what the sporting director role is. Supporters probably will, they, they won't understand the role, but as I say, a lot of people get in touch with, the, you know, about the role. And, and as I tell them, if you're expecting it to be a Monday to Friday, nine to five, you're in the wrong job. And as I say, especially in the off season where it's just manic, it's a seven day a week. You know, it's like even last week, I'm doing a Zoom at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, you know, because just that's the side of recruitment. You're speaking to agents, you're speaking to players, you're starting to sell a vision of the club and you want to effectively go, um, you know, again, as smooth as you can. You're trying to impress, you're trying to get club or players up here. Um, and it's, you just have to put everything into to the task at hand. You'll probably be able to hear you in our microphones. The work is going on yeah. uh, to our left-hand side. Uh, as I say, we are here at the brand new Long Branch Homes, but you mentioned there, and it's the big question, we'll get straight into it, recruitment. We'll come onto the two signs that have already came in, and who knows, maybe by the time this video comes out, we may, we may have some more news, but how have you found it in terms of bringing in players, contract negotiations? It's probably one of the most important times of the season, despite the fact we're not in the season. Yeah, yeah, it, it's manic, and, and, and again, from my perspective, and um, when the season's over, I think it's always important from my side that the manager recharges. Obviously, we'll have our meetings, we'll have our discussions near enough every day. We'll put a plan in place, um, regards recruitment, what areas we're looking to strength, because obviously when John came into the role, for me then, it's about planning ahead. Ideally, it would have been in League Two, which was such a, um, you know, it was a devastation. Let's be honest about that. And the, the plan was then effectively what I my head on, and I think experience has taught me, is if, you know, we were to go down, um, we've got a plan for recruitment for the National League. If we were to stay up, we've got a plan for both. So, I had planned for both, in the hope that we stay in the, um, in the football league. But obviously, it wasn't to be. We're planning for the National League. So in regards to that, it's, it's been, as I say, seven days, flat out, trying to get it. You're always trying to get ahead of the game. You're trying to, as I said before, I'm on a Zoom at 10 o'clock at night. You're, you're hoping these little things make a difference, you know, impress the agents, impress the player, but you're willing to jump on a Zoom at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night to try and get us to your club. I'll do whatever it takes because what we want to try and do is bounce back up. And I think we have to throw everything to that. You know, the thing about it is, it's not a quick fix. There's a structure that I've put, you know, I've put in place in regards to trying to recruit, trying to get the players that are effectively going to take us back to the football league. Within that, there's going to be slowness in the fact that the quality of player that we're looking for, they're going to have options. I'd be actually quite shocked if we were speaking to a player and they didn't have options. Then you sort of think, are they good enough? You know, because you're the only club in for them. And rest assured, every, every agent we've spoken to, every player that we've spoken to, they've had a number of options. 
So yeah, there's many challenges that come with that. It can be quite time consuming. I'm one of those, I like to get on with things. You know, speak to the manager every day. Um, in regards to players, we sort of, we bounce off each other because bear in mind, you probably, and, and, and over the five years, probably even longer than that, they've built up agents. You're speaking to near enough everyone over the course of eight, 12 weeks, even before that because you want to make sure you recruit right, you want to get the positions right, you want to get strong recruitment, and the fact that we want to get back to the Football League, and we're hoping, and when it comes to it, that it's something that we can be up there and thereabouts. You talk about that plan, trying to sell the football club, trying to sell the culture of this football club. It may be fair in saying this club has really not had an identity since mm. it got into the Football League a couple of years ago, but how big and important is it when you're selling this stuff? is that the manager that you've got is John Askey, who we could see, despite the disappointment, that he's going to create an identity for Hartlepool United and a way of playing, a style of playing, and a way that he wants his players to be. No, I did, did you know what? I'd, I'd actually counteract that in a way. I, I think, and again, to give you a deeper understanding of it, I think myself, along with the board, have got to create that identity. I come into the club, I'll be honest, there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing there. You know, you talk about the identity, you talk about a philosophy, a vision, all that type of thing. There was nothing there. And I don't think, to be honest with you, it can ever be a case that the manager implements that. Because to give you an example, if a manager comes in um, and he puts a style in place, say a philosophy, a 3 5 2, an attractive, um, attractive style of football, and then he recruits the players on the back of that formation. But then a few results, whatever it may happen, he ends up going or he ends up sacked, whatever it may be. And then a new manager comes in and he sees, ah, well, I'm going to change formation. So effectively, the majority of them players are surplus. You know, then you're going to be paying out money after money after money. So what I've done previously was effectively, I've created that identity, created a philosophy. That's a club philosophy, a club style of play. So when the recruitment process goes through with the manager, so if you're sitting down, this is our style of play, this is how we look to play. Not just one formation, you know, you'll have a couple of formations, maybe a 3-5-2 or a 4-3-3, for example. At least then, you know, you're sitting down and there's the clarity around that, right? This is our style of play. We want you to do it. Principles might be different within that, but it means then effectively when they come in and they adhere to that and it's clear in, ter in terms of how we're going to play, it means then players are going to be recruited on the back of that style of play so that when a manager moves on to maybe better things or a manager's maybe results aren't working and he's sacked, whatever it may be, at least then the next person that comes in, it's all there in place. Do you think that was missing from our yeah. previous recruitment? Yeah. I mean, we got relegated, that's the facts, and you know, you, you can say whether it was the staff, but the players, you know, and everyone in the club will hold their hands up and say, the players weren't good enough, the team wasn't good enough, the squad wasn't good enough. Is that the mistakes that were made in that previous recruitment that maybe players were just signed for the sake of signing rather than saying, this guy will keep us up, this guy fits into our philosophy? Yeah, I, I don't, I, again, from that side of it, you know, I don't want to put blame to anything that's gone on before or anything like that, but especially these roles of the sport director, director of football, whatever you want to call it, their task is to implement all this to make the, the club more stable. I can only go from my honest experience of coming in. When I came in, there was nothing. And that's me being brutally honest about that. You know, you, 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 you have the chairman at the top of it who's been massively supported, who, who has funded it, who's been absolutely brilliant. And, and the things I've seen, again, I, I'll be straight with you, I'm an outsider. You know, I'm coming in because I want, to, I want the, the football club to get back in the league. You know, all the supporters I've met. I've always said this, and even in the interviews I've done before, the passionate supporters up, up north, up this way. I've been to a number of games at, at Hartlepool before with previous clubs and I've seen the place bouncing. It's been intimidating. It's a place that you didn't want to come. I just think in, the sh you know, in recent times as such, that's maybe eased off a bit. It hasn't been. But the thing about it is, is everybody behind the scenes has been putting in all the work to make sure you know, that we can effectively get back up to the Football League or effectively if we're in the Football League, we can stay there and really kick on. When you came in as an outsider, I know you said you know there wasn't really a philosophy there and that's something that you wanted to bring in. What was one of the 
key things that you noticed about Hartlepool United when you first came in because it's evident to see the fan base is there yeah. through thick and thin. But when you came in and you're the guy who's not just working with the playing staff, yeah. you're also working with the office staff. Yeah. You're working from everybody all the way up from the manager all the way down to the cleaner. You know, you know every single person. Yeah. What's some of the big things that you noticed about this club, whether it was the things that were successful at and we do well at, or yeah. things that may have you know, been a reason for our relegation? Yeah, well, uh, again, as I say, I, I can only go from what I've come in, but bear in mind, I've done a lot of due diligence into the role. When I spoke to the club about coming to the role, I've done a lot of due diligence into it, into the area, I think that's key. Because, and, and that's where it, pl it plays a big part in recruitment. You know, recruitment is such a big thing. And yeah, you can look at the technical, the tactical, but it's even one of the things I've had to develop is, is, is a player recruitment. The hardly pull player, as I call it, what does it look like? And one of the things, the key traits you've got to do is link into the local community. And what I mean link into the local community is the hard work in the local area. And that's the least that the, the, the fans will demand on a Saturday or a Tuesday. They've got to be, when you cross that white line, you've got to give 100%. That's the sort of linking it into the local community. And then we look at the technical, the tactical. Obviously, there's the formation. So our formation, 3-5-2 or 4-3-3, is what the players have fit into that, you know, which I think is very important. But when I first came in, there was none of that in place. Nobody could present me anything with it. I look at the office staff, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That's all, that, that's all there. That side of it, seen it was fine. But as I say, the football side needed a lot of work. And that's not nobody's fault, but again, it goes back to what we were saying is managers will come and go and the philosophies that they have in their mind and things like that, that'll go with them. And then it's up to the next manager to come in and, and almost have that inconsistency and that unstableness because if they come in and they're successful, they go and everything goes with them. There's nothing down there that really cements the idea of Hartlepool United, you know, which I think is important. It's stuff that I've worked tirelessly since I've come into the club and really creating an identity, you know, and the fact that the mission, you know, and, and uh, you know, effectively, obviously trying to be a, a good, solid football league club. But unfortunately now I'm having to work the process where it's trying to get into the football league again. So a lot of that then is down to the recruitment. But effectively, the point I'm making is getting everything down on, on effectively a, a, a blueprint that shows what we're about, how we do it. And then it means, you know, when, you know, when John, you know, moves on, hopefully successfully, and, and a, you know, a big club championship, whatever it comes from, and he, the next manager that comes in, it's all there for him. It, it's almost starting again, isn't it? In terms of the blueprint and, yeah. trying, and trying to create that philosophy, as you mentioned, but recruitment right now, you said you wanted to talk straight. You, you yeah. wanted to be truthful with the fans. Yeah, 100%. I suppose over the years uh, and and way before uh, the current chairman, previous chairmen, when times haven't been going so well, fans will always get frustrated when players yeah. are coming in. Yeah. You could probably say it's still quite early stages of the window in terms of you know pre seasons and stuff for a couple of weeks yet. Uh, I think currently we've got 17 players if you include the new two yeah. uh, in the squad. But you know. Years on years, we, we do tend to hear the same things of, you know, look, we're biding our time, we're looking for the right players. Players don't really want to move to Hartlepool, players don't want to move to the North East, players are happier in London. We can't compete with other clubs financially, especially, my, especially in the Football League and the, and the huge teams, and the huge teams that are in this league yeah. as well. You know, there's a long way to go, especially yeah. in this window, but what are some of the factors that you would want to tell to the fans that goes into this recruitment? Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of the things that when fans complain, they are true. Yeah. It is, yeah. Hard, it is hard to sign players, yeah. and you're not just yeah. going to sign anybody, as you mentioned, but, you know, what are the certain things that go into looking for players? And, and I can guarantee you'll probably tell me there's players that we've already missed out on, just and nothing to do with ourselves, but just because... I think it was some of it, if we're being brutally honest. You know, there, there's factors of all sorts. It, you know, um, that they don't want to come, probably because of, you're looking at maybe players in the Midlands or the South or whatever, some players don't want to come up here. That's a brutal honesty of it. And that's why I say you'll go on the Zoom. What I try, the ideal scenario for me is what I want to do is, you know, I, I really professionalize the whole thing. For, but from a recruitment aspect of things, and, and for me, it's, it's gotta be, yeah, money's a big factor in everything, but I want to twist that in its head. It gotta be about ambition. And we gotta show that ambition. You know, um, so for me, it's about ambition. Then we can talk the money side of it. But ideally, for me, it's about the ideal scenario from a recruitment perspective. And, and, and we had done this, um, and I've always previously done it as well. We, you'll maybe go and pick a player up from airport. You go and pick, pick him up from the train station and, and show them around the area. Because it might be that sort of, you know, hardy ball, it's far up there. It's, it's this, it's that. 
But I think when you actually go and show them, and I've done it, where you go and show them, you go, do you know what, it's actually, it's actually really nice up here. It's somewhere you can come, bring a young family, whatever it may be. As I say, you know, from a, from a player, a young player, the, you know, we, we have a couple of club houses, they're absolutely stunning, you know, so th there's a lot of things, there's, there's a lot of foundations in place with things, but what I want to try and do is go all out and try and get our targets in the fact that our first targets and bringing them up, showing them actually what it's all about, showing them, you know, again, speaking about the identity, the philosophy, how we want to play, really going out on a limb, taking the player out to lunch. Then you speak about, obviously, where you fit into the plans, how we see you, what we want to do, what we want to achieve. And I think if you get that, if we can get the players up first and foremost, I believe in how we sell the club, it can happen. You know, the big challenge is always getting them there, but. You know, bear in mind, because we're National League as well, and trust me, this has happened with the majority of the players that we have identified as the Football League players. So if you're being frank, open and honest, yeah. you're looking at the Football League players, what type of players at the moment have you missed out on, if you can give specific names or, or anything like that? Yeah, well, I, I, again, I'll not, I'll not go through any names as such, you know, but it's, as I say, it's Football League players who have maybe been down the lower end of League Two, up the higher end, and, and do you know what? The chairman's been fully supportive of it. Without naming names, we have, we have in, in regards to recruitment, trying to get, um, I'll, I'll not name a striker, or strikers, because we've chatted to a few, but the, the chairman's been massively supportive of that to make it happen. He wants to do that, he wants to get back to the Football League, and we want to do that, and he's willing to support that, and that's one of the things you know, I've seen, you know, that I chat, I chat to the chairman, as I say, weekly, um, and he's desperate to get back there. He's, you know, again, he's passionate for the club, he's local, um, it's been second to none. Obviously, there's the issues around, you know, the, the, the sale of the club, the club being up for sale and that type of thing. But, you know, he's going on and he's supporting everything because he wants to get back there. From a recruitment, th you know, aspect is, you know, when we're chatting to players, yeah, they're, they're the football league players. Um, and again, you know, taking into consideration what you're effectively asking them, um, a renowned football league player to do is drop to the National League. It's tough, but that's why I say if you get them up here and you see them and show what the club's about, you have a better chance. You look at Joel Dixon, you know, prime example. He was League One. He's a League One goalkeeper, you know. But the big thing is, is you, you got to sell him that vision. It's a local. Is that what you're selling? Is you and the gaffer? Is that what you're selling that as? Are you selling that as a National League side that is looking to push on and get? Promotion straight away. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that, that's got to be the key. Hartlepool and, and you, Hartlepool's a big club. It's a football league club, in my opinion. It's a, and, and the thing about it is, and players know that. So you're almost trying to take away the leagues and just put the football, you know, the football clubs aside. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's effectively what you're trying to do. And we, we you know, you, you talk about Joel Dixon. And Joe's a local lad as well. Um, but again, you know, trying to link it in, can you know the quality, the, the amount of quality that's up, up the north is 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 frightening. And what we want to try and do is, you know, and, and we've done that with with a load, a load of players that we've chatted to, we've spoken to them, we've given it our best, but they've they've chose to stay maybe league uh, league two, league one, whatever that may be. So, in your honest opinion, and the gaffer's honest opinion, and whether you want to name numbers or not. How many ideally do you want, with, with 17 already in mind in the playing squad, and we know some will probably depart. Yeah, yeah. How many in mind are you looking to bring in this summer? Are we, have you not got a ball figure? Is it, and is there any specific areas in the field where you thought, we really, really, obviously the goalkeeper is a yeah, huge one. Yeah. And obviously I know another goalkeeper will come in, but any other areas and, and what type of numbers can you give me? Yeah, I'll give you numbers. As the, the, when we chatted before, um, I first, came, you know, again chatting to, chatting to John, the thing he wanted, which was the most important thing in regards to squad size, was competition for places, you know, and I, I think, and again, speaking honestly, I think at times this season, I think players knew their position was safe. So, you know, I, I always think, when players are pushed, you get a better, you get an extra 10%, 15%. And I think this season, especially, you look at one or two players that maybe weren't pushed because there's no competition. And I think that that can be a concern. So what effectively what John wants to do, and as I say, John's absolutely brilliant to work with and, and we're very much on the same page. And what I want to try and do is, is create, you know, help him. As I say, it, it, it's never, and I want to make his point clear when we talk about recruitment, Re recruitment's, not me, what I do is support John with it. You know, the players, you know, you put, John will always have final say, that'll be all, all his. 
what I want to do is effectively take all the noise around it. So I'll do the contract negotiations, all that, the build up, anything that John effectively needs to help him effectively try and get the player. Because I think that, that the most important thing, and especially when you get into the league season, is when John's training, doing all the team aspects of things, he's got to be be prepared physically and mentally on match day to make the right decisions. And that's where my learning has come from. And I think John stated as well that he's never had yeah. a sporting director yeah. to work yeah. with. So it's almost taken all of that extra stress and pressure off it's... his shoulders and said, John, look, we'll obously you know work together and bring in players in, but match day, just focus on no, that and I'll, yeah. I'll do the rest. And, and, and I'll, I'll use my example of, and that's why I get into the role as sporting director, and I haven't told this story much, but I was managing Oldham in 2015, and I found myself at the time, I was, I was doing all the training, I was doing all the recruitment, I was speaking to all the agents, I was managing up, um, doing all the phone calls, was, as I said, I was doing absolutely everything. But I just found I became mentally exhausted and we played Peterborough in my last game. And, and tactically, you know, as a coach, I've got all my qualifications and that. But I've always been tactically astute and aware. And we played Peterborough and they, they, they changed the formation. And, and I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And we, we ended up getting B5-1 that day. I didn't see it. And the thing about it was I, I, I was sacked after it. But the big thing for me was I came away, I reflected, I, rest, I rested on it. I watched the video back and I seen it then because I was rested. The point I'm making is the manager's job is very intense and that's where my role effectively comes in. I just found myself then, mentally I was absolutely shattered um, because of everything it was that, that I was doing. And that's why I wanted to get into this side. I came away from that role and I thought there's got to be something to support managers so that effectively managers can just manage a training, do the training and prepare match day. At least then, mentally, physically, they're in a good place to make the right decisions for the team. And all the other noise around it, I take away. And that, again, goes with, with John's approval because there's, there's situations in this where... A, Again, you can be conscious of overstepping the mark. I know my boundaries with things that I need to do, things that I don't need to do, but a lot of that's communication, communicating with John. John's been absolutely, he's been a breath of fresh air to, um, to work with. And, and, and as I say, we're, we're both geared to, to wanting the same thing, and that's success for the football club. Talk about attracting players. I think we'll just come down and show them this, won't we? Stunning. Yeah. It's not bad to have your house, is it? <laughs> no, it's all right, isn't it? In nice view to look out at. Yeah. Incomings, outgoings. The big kind of story as the summer goes on. We'll start with the incomings. Two have come in, and let's start with the goalkeeper. Yeah. Joel Dixon. You mentioned him a little bit before. Uh, played every single game of Barrow's National League winning campaign, and then went and played every single game in League Two before getting his move to Bolton. We needed a keeper. But it wasn't just about, right, we need a keeper, let's grab anyone. Yeah, You've yeah. got a really good player in Joel Dixon, haven't you? Absolutely. You know, again, I've, and the big thing from my perspective as well, and, and, and John's, and I'll feed back to John, and as I say, the, the communication and the talking throughout and identifying players, and, and between us, because a lot of what happens, especially this time of year, is agents get in touch and effectively try and sell a player, even though the manager or whatever hasn't seen them. and. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we do a thorough due diligence and the chances are very highly because of our experience and recruitment and being out at games and watching players over the years, it's very highly we're gonna very highly likely we're gonna know who they are and the big thing for, for Joel was more the due diligence on the character. Um, because we knew what a quality keeper, what he'll bring to the team. I think it would be you know, a, a brilliant signing that hopefully the supporters are happy with. As I said, as I said before, in my opinion, he's, he's a League One goalkeeper. You know, I think he, he, you've seen that in the past. You know, the experience he has of getting out of this league as well, which is very important. As a, you know, for, for us, we want to try and bounce back as quick as we can. Um, and I thought he'd, he'd be absolutely brilliant. And as you've seen with obviously with with last season. You know, with you know the keeper situation was a bit sort of hit and miss. You'd you'd Ben, who another fantastic keeper, and obviously we could Jacob and Lone. But what we want to effectively do is have two keepers in the building who can push each other. You know, so you have obviously Joel, and you look at the quality you've got there. But effectively, we want to bring another one in that can help push Joel. As I said before, you know, it's about the competition. You know, and that's not just putting. 
a young lad in who's not going to push Joel. It's about somebody who, you know, will be saying to Joel, listen, I'm going to come in, I'm, I'm going to fight for my place and I'm going to try and oust you as a goalkeeper. And that's what we want all over the pitch. And it's not bad that Joel knows the area. Yeah. He's a, Sun a Sunderland lad and was at Hartlepool uh, during the days of Scott Flinders and didn't make an appearance, but, you know, gained a lot of experience under Scott. And it, when you're looking at a position like a goalkeeper, I know we spoke a couple of weeks ago and you said to me, look, we've got a couple of targets and Joel's top of the list. It must be such a relief off the shoulders when, you, when someone like Joel signs on the dotted yeah. line in the end. Yeah. And you, yeah. You've got the goalkeeper that you want. You haven't just got a goalkeeper for the sake of getting a goalkeeper. Yeah, no, absolutely. As I say, there's a thorough due diligence done into everything. There's targets that we, we go looking for. You know, we can only ask the question. Sometimes we might be way off, but if we don't ask the question, we don't know. And we've done this through, uh, when I first came into the role, it all started then in trying to implement a strategy. You know, one of the strategies that sort of put in place was regarding local players. You know, can we recruit locally? Because as I said before, you know, the amount of talent that's up this way is frightening. You know, even if it's only 15, 20, 30 minutes away, that's fine. You know, so can we attract those local players to the football club? And a lot of that's got, you know, they'll know the local area and everything like that. So we, we try to throw everything that we can to it to make it happen. And with Joel, obviously they went through the process. I think we spoke to the agent. These agents have been absolutely fantastic, very supportive of it as well um, at SMI. And I think that, that helped the process as well. You talk about local connections and we'll get into Kira in the second summer signing. We've obviously over the years had you know players, younger players come from yeah. Middlesbrough, Sunderland, Newcastle. But I think there's a strong case to say our connection with the bigger North East teams probably isn't as strong as it could be. Is that something that you specifically looked at and you know reaching out to Shola Ramiobi, the law manager yeah. in Newcastle, yeah. you know Middlesbrough, Sunderland, and saying, look, like you guys can really help us out, and equally we can really help you out yeah. here as well. Yeah. Is, that, yeah. is that something that you've looked at? Huge. Huge, because we've got a competitive budget for this league, you know, um, which I think is important. But what we want to do, and a lot, again, a lot of clubs do it, but they'll effectively get loan players in to make up the numbers. We, we want to have quality, as I said, competition for places, you know, strong competition at that. But one of the things I've noticed about here um, is the, the links with the local clubs has virtually been non-existent. Um, and what I've effectively done is, and, and I've gone out to, to these clubs, um, only last week I was at Middlesbrough, you know, with, with Craig and I'd put a presentation on to them regards, you know, again, I spoke about our philosophy, like I've done that sort of identity. Um, because, you know, previously in the past, yes, players might come out and go and things like that, but for me, it was about really laying down them foundations, you know, um, and, and Craig was brilliant. Craig came back to me a week after it, sort of probably digesting the, 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 the conversation, the presentation. And he said, Daz, listen, really enjoyed that. Thank you um, for coming along, putting the presentation on. We'd like to work with you in regards to players, you know, and that, that, that was through me developing a presentation and identity, taking it out to, down to Middlesbrough. Speaking with Craig, I was probably there for about two hours. You know, I spoke about our vision, what we want to do. I spoke what we can do for the player, how that can benefit the football club. So, for example, a player will come out to us and loan from, say, Newcastle, Sunderland, Middlesbrough. Um, and what they'll effectively do, they'll get all their data, everything that they need. It'll all be sent back to their respective football club. And that's what clubs want to see. It works with them as well because you look at it as their loans managers, whoever it may be, are able to come out. They're only 20, 30 minutes away to come out and watch their player. It's a no-brainer, really. Yeah. But what we have to do within that is we've got to back up what we say. You know, I was very honest with them when I spoke to certain things that we've got, certain things that we don't. And I think through that, we gained a bit of respect in itself. Do you think because you mentioned before that we've never had that philosophy or that maybe way of playing or this is how your player will fit into us, that's why they maybe thought it might not worth the risk, we'll send them all the way down to, we'll send them all the way down to Exeter, Colchester, wherever, do you know, somewhere down south rather than coming to Hartlepool, but now we've got that in place. Yeah, yeah, that, and, and, and that, that, that's key. And I know how, how far that goes. Um, and the thing about it is that there was actually a player in, in, when, when I was at Newport, there was a player, I'll give you an example, there was a player at Middlesbrough. Um, and I, I wanted him at Newport as well. Um, and I ended up getting him at Newport. 
because of the same thing. I spoke to them about, even when I was at Newport, I was putting presentations. I was doing it with all the clubs, trying to build up foundations to put presentations and speak to clubs and trying to get their best players. And, and it happened that we got the, the, the Middlesbrough player. That shouldn't happen, mm. you know? So that shouldn't happen. So one of the first things I'd done within my role was to get output presentations on and really, you know, a strength and a bond there that we can work closely together. But the big thing is it'll never be a case of that we can go out and, you know, uh, we need a right back him with these. All these players, and again, it's recruitment, is we will have watched them three, four, five times. You know, between myself and John, you know, we, we've got that knowledge and experience. And I think that's key to that. So that effectively when I speak to a Middlesbrough, I can name the player and I said, and then it's a case that obviously the presentation, he knows everything by, but then I'm able to say, right, this is what he'll do. This is where we'd probably like to play him. Um, can you effectively loan us? They benefit from it because his development is being enhanced because he's playing senior football, ideally every game. And that's the ideal scenario and the fact that, you know, the player comes out, they'll, they'll never be, which happened in the past, where you'd speak to clubs and the player got to come out and he was guaranteed to play. I'll never guarantee that. So when I'm effectively speaking to the clubs, it, listen, they got to come out and earn their place. If they get in the team, it's up to them to stay in. If, if they go in and it, it, there may be they, they didn't play well for two or three games and they're back out, they have to fight to get back in. I know they're good enough because they will have been watched three or four times. But it doesn't always work out like that. It might be the environment that they come in. It might be difficult. They don't settle, whatever it may be. But it's that due diligence that you mentioned, isn't it? That's if, it. If, like, you know, and they might be 18, 19, yeah. but they've got to have the right attitude yeah, at 18 it. and 19 yeah. as well to, to yeah. come in and just because you play for Newcastle, Sunderland or Millsbury, you're not going to come in and walk into this team in the National yeah. League. You've yeah. got to earn that place, as you mentioned. And, you know, you and, and John especially have a, a good eye for that. Yeah, no, it's huge. Don't get me wrong. You know, and again, I've, I've, I've many a story that, you know, again, it's all, all about opinions as such. Uh, you, you know you're trying to do the right thing, you're trying to recruit the right player. When the player come in, for some reason, it just might not work. They might not just, you know, the quality's there, but time's trying to get that quality, you might not get it. Don't get me wrong, the percentage is a lot higher that it'll be successful. You know, and even look at, you know, at cases, even at, um, at Newport, where we, we, we brought Finn Azaz in from Aston Villa. You know, Finn, first couple of games or whatever he was in, that he was out. Um, and then new manager come in and he played near enough every game and he get young player of the year in League Two. You know, and I think, uh, again, it, it's due diligence is done into every player because recruitment, especially at this level, you know, where there's not a lot of money, you got to put your due diligence into the recruitment to try and get it right as best you can. Second summer signing was Kieran Burton. Yeah. Uh, Left back, left centre back, defender, versatile, left footed, young lad, comes from Scarborough Athletic, yeah. highly rated, a couple of teams after him, we were his move. I think if you you know, if you were frank and you were honest and you asked a lot of Hartlepool fans before his move, who's Kieran Burton, yeah. they probably might not be and I'll tell you who he was. But as I said, very highly rated and we had a fight in our hands to get him. But yeah. tell us a little bit about Kieran. Yeah, again, to give you a sort of backstory to that, that recruitment's always, you know, even the unknowns, the unknowns in non-league. Um, but I look at even the, when I, I brought Ben Godfrey to York City, you know, don't get me wrong, it was only an academy player, but it was a case that, as even, even as I've seen in Ben, I see the same thing in Kieran. You know, I went out to watch them a number of times. You know, I've seen his quality, I've seen his attributes. I see what he saw, what, what he can bring to the team. By no, by no means the finished article. So I think it's important that the supporters, you know, understand that and to give him time. You know, he, he's still a player who is very much developing. But the attributes that he's got in there, he's very good one v one defending. Very good, as I say, aerially. He's a, he's about six foot two um, and quick. You know, key attributes to be a top defender. And what this opportunity um, helps him with is to come into a full-time environment and to really kick on and to get better and better because he's got that desire and the commitment, the willingness to, to do as best he can and I know he'll throw everything at the opportunity. Very highly thought of at Scarborough. I went and watched him a number of times. He was a Tadcaster before that and I think, you know, again, you know, give it, give it six months a year. When he acclimatises to, to full-time training, I think he'll be a fantastic signing. Outgoings. 
retain list obviously came out. Yeah. Uh, it's it, you've always got to take your time with stuff like that because you've got to figure out who you want next season, who wants to stay next season. Um, we'll talk about some of the big ones, and obviously I, I know you'll always be frank and honest with us and uh, with with how those situations went. We'll start with Jamie Sturry. Mm. Um, Great player, everyone yeah. knows that. Yeah. Loyal yeah. servant, you know, was huge in that promotion season. Showed his quality in League Two as well, and recently signed at Doncaster. But talk us through the talks with Jamie Sturry. No, uh, again, um, and I know talks had went on sort of before my time um, regarding Jamie. Obviously, the club wanted to keep Jamie. Um, I think a lot of this as well. Uh, again, I can't, I can't speak for Jamie. It might have been a different scenario if we had a state in the football league yeah. um, I, I don't know um, but effectively when it, it came to you know the news obviously we were going to be relegated I think maybe his mind was made up there and and you can't fault a lot if it's yeah ideally you know it, and a, an ideal scenario where you, you sort of stay to, to take us back up but you know an opportunity to, to stay in the football league was probably too good an opportunity for him to to turn down so you have to respect that you know he's been a good loyal servant to the football club and we wish him well um, and and obviously you have the like of um, Ben Killip you know again I've seen Ben play even even when Hartlepool were in the, the National League um, previously and I thought he, he was he was fantastic it was a big part of the success and the journey then I think many will probably remember his final game for Hartlepool very fondly it's against Stockport I, that not, was not just a penalty save, but the yeah. the one under the crossbar. You you can you can name so many, and you know whether whether you want to say that was him putting himself in the shop window, whether yeah. that was him just going out with a bit of pride. Yeah. Um, another one who you know will be remembered fondly for his work during our promotion, and I think in his early days, obviously came under a lot of criticism. But what was the kind of conversations with Ben Killip? Because he, you know, despite losing his place to As uh, under Askey to Jakob. It was probably someone that you you would have kept a hold of if you could. Um, uh, do you know what? The, the, the mutual conversation was probably was best for both. That you know, that, that there was no, that there was there was discussions, and then it was just pretty much at a stage. Speaking to his agent, obviously everything was going through his agent. That was probably best for both. That it sort of moved on. You know, he had great time at the club and good good success at the club, obviously. You know, with a previous um, promotion and that, but I think you know again, you know Ben from his aspect of, of losing the t you know losing his place in the team and being out of the team for you know quite a considerable time, and I think it you know it was all mo it, don't get me wrong he was motivated if he get the opportunity and you will have seen that in the last game because I thought it's, it's as good as a goalkeeper performance you'll ever ever see and if he was on trial with the club and playing in a game that would have got him a deal. Um, but I just felt, and again, the conversation between the agent um, and myself, and speaking with John on that, because as I say, you know, effectively the the final decision will always be made by the manager in regards to who he wants to keep. It. I just do, as I say, the noise and the doggy work around it. But I think even gauging the conversation with the agent, it was probably something that it was it was best that they both went their separate ways. We can probably expect further outgoings, and especially when it comes to the players who we didn't see feature a lot last season, mm. but. What conversations have you had regarding the players, the star players from last season? Yeah, I know, I, you know, I know it's hard to pick out star players in a relegation season, but your Joshua Murrays, your Callum Cooks, who were, you know, they're obviously going to gain interest from League Two clubs or, mm. or big yeah. national league clubs. Yeah. You know, what yeah. conversations have you had around those type of players? Well, the, the, there's them type of players. There's been interest in them. I've, I've had calls about them, but and again, I think it shows the ambition and hopefully the supporters. You know, see that, it would be probably easy, like most clubs do, because bear in mind when you get relegated to the National League, there's a big loss that comes with that, um, a big loss. Um, and it's probably easy to sort of try and balance the books, if you like, because as I say, I've, I've had you know, a few conversations regarding some of our, some of our younger players. But if I'm being honest, I did, we, we, we didn't entertain it because we want to bounce back. You're not going to really achieve or get back to where we were if, if you're going to sell our younger, better players. You know, and I think I think that's key, and I think it's key the supporters know that that there was interest, and, and we've effectively knocked it back. That there was an offer for one player, and we knocked it back. 
um, because effectively, you know, that we want to get back to the Football League and what we're trying to effectively do, and hopefully you'll see that with Joel um, and Kieran, is we want to put a squad together that can help us um, achieve that. Current squads, you look at the retain list, you look at what we put out a couple of weeks ago, I said 17 I think is currently on the books at the moment, obviously with expected outgoings, more incomings to happen. Do you see strength in this current squad that we've got? And you might look at the core, you might look at from you and Murray, who obviously improved massively towards back end of the season, Tom Crawford, Ollie Finney, Josh Yamera up front, Joe Gray. Have you and John discussed the current yeah. squad as it is, yeah. you know, what's your thoughts? In, in depth, you know, as a, the, the point I, I made before as well, it's important there's competitions. Um, and again, the, the big thing is having a strong spine, you know, so it's trying to recruit in the key areas. Um, because the, the, the big thing is, is, as we know with the National League, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a tough season. You know, there's going to be a lot of, you know, sort of Tuesday, Saturday games, and it's important that we've got a strong squad to do that. That's why I say recruitment's got to be right, and that'll include, you know, loan signings, permanent signings, and that and effectively the players that, you know, can hopefully take us to the next level. I think we put on the retainers as well, obviously, people that were triggered contract extension. One of them was home growing Matty Dolan, who obviously you obviously know really well. Yeah, yeah. One of them was Edon Pruwi, who joined from Brentford, had a lot of, you know, key performances. Uh, another one was Mohamed Silla, um, and I think it's important to mention. You would have seen it across social media yourself, especially when John Askey, you know, was happy to say at the press, some players decided they didn't have the mindset, the correct mindset towards the end of the season. I think a lot of people would have said, Mohamed will never play for this football club again. But we've triggered his extension. He's mm -hmm. a Hartlepool United player. What was the reasoning behind that? Well, there, there's many because it, it was dealing with it. Um, and the thing about it is, is Mo had an option in his contract. Um, that we activated. I made Mo, um, and it wasn't long after I came in, because um, Mo started to play and his performances were excellent. Um, and his agent came on to me, um, speaking about um, contract extensions and things like that. I said, yeah, no problem. I said, I'm just in, but give us a bit of time. But So lo and behold, I played a couple of games, um, went to him, the agent, um, and effectively said, we will be activating the option because you know, you, you've signed the contract at the start um, and there's an option here in there that we're going to activate it. And if it's worst case, we're in the National League, um, you'll be with us in that in, in regards to helping us get back, as we spoke about, strong spine. And I think as, as, as everybody, all the supporters will tell you, Mo, when he was on the pitch, he was absolutely fantastic for the team. I know of interest. So, yeah, no, Mo made it, made it clear that he... He didn't want to play um, for the club. He made it, you know, again in a couple of a couple of the games. And again, this is where a lot of discussion came on. Um, Mo didn't want the option activated, and I wanted to, as effectively, I said to Mo um, through a translator and obviously the agent is Mo. Listen, we'll sit down at the end of the season and we'll talk this through. It's really, you know, we, we wanted to activate it. To be honest, I thought I would have been pleased, um, but obviously I didn't want that activated. What I said to him then was, we'll sit down at the end of the season then and we'll talk us through what we effectively need now is to get you to give your performances on the pitch um, and give your 100% for the football club because we want to, we want to stay in the football league. Um, and as I say, the, the, the performance on the pitch unquestionable I think it, it, it was great again linking it into the type of player because he gave us all these he battles and everything but through that through them performances he gained a bit of interest um, so as a football club and me within my role I've got to protect against that if I don't activate the option it goes to someone somebody's probably you know got a, a good quality player um, but as I say my job is to you know again Work for the football club is to support the football club and the football club's needs, especially with contracts and with players coming and going. And, and at that time, is effectively an asset to the football club. So it was a case then that we got to the end of the season. Mo made these things clear. I know there was interest. I know there was, there was people speaking to the agents. So again, I had to protect against that. So if anybody wanted to buy Mo, um, they've effectively got, us, got to pay us a fee to do so. 
So I feel we've done our job. John managed the, the, the situation fantastically well. Um, again, he, you know, we got Mo on the pitch. Yeah, we, it was tough you know, to do so, but we got there with it. But the problem you know, we have now is obviously, you know, no, the big thing is in football, your, your character follows you. Um, and unfortunately with Mo, it's not sort of the first time this has happened, um, which is a shame because, you know, any time I've spoken with him or through a translator, it, it, it was great. But, you know, again, in this type of scenario, it was, a, it was a very difficult one, but I had to effectively make a football, you know, decision that was better for the club. Um, and if there was any clubs interested, they got to come to me um, through that. There was a couple of clubs that shown a bit of interest. But I think when they go, you know, they've gone and done the due diligence, they haven't come back to me yet. We spoke about the players, we spoke about the office staff, the structure, the coaching staff and the coaching team. Carl Leatherin's departed and he's gone to Doncaster. Um, it, it leaves a gap. Um, Mark Goodlad could fill that as a previous goalkeeper coach. Is that look something that yourself and, and John are looking to add to the coaching staff? You obviously, you know, you've got the gaffer, you've got Tony Sweeney, who everyone knows is an unbelievable asset to, yeah. this, to this football club. Um, how much confidence do you have in that team of people? And all the way from, you know, John Askey, Tony Sweeney, uh, you've got Kieran Lee who's coming as a new sports science. You've got obviously all of our physios and Carl and, uh, and Sukraj. And, uh, how confident are you in that team? Is there something looking to add to? No, uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll just go back. If you, if you look at John, and, and, and again, John likes to work with small teams. As, you know, any club he's been at previously, he doesn't like to play, you know, work with, um, you know, big team of staff. He likes it small and close, um, which is great. Um, but in, for me, in conjunction with the board, it's, it's about supporting John and what he needs with that. So effectively, you know, what John has is, is what John's wanted. If John needs anybody to add to that, you know, he just has to let us know. But as I say, you know, John's always worked with small, close teams. And um, yeah, and, and the, you know, the staff members you've just spoke about is, is who he'll be working with um, for next season. And just finally, uh, as we wrap things up, and thank you again for joining us. It's exciting times, despite the relegation, you know, it's a fresh start with yourself and with John Stain. Uh, players coming in, players coming out. Fans are always going to be frustrated. That is just the culture of football, yes. isn't it? But, what can you give now with the players returning, I think, July the 3rd? Hartlepool fans, what message can you give them to say, look, in the next couple of weeks, we will be or we will have? Yeah, I think, uh, and again, to just broaden your, your, your sort of answer to your question, we, we, we hope it's exciting times. The one thing that you'll get from, you know, again, I speak from myself, you know, the board, John, because um, I know I work with John every day, is we'll give 100%. The recruitment side of it and all that, we know it like the back of our hands. Like we're doing now, we work seven days a week, recruitment. Yeah, but, you know, we're, there's many plates spinning at the minute. The only thing we can guarantee is that we give 100% to the role um, on a professional basis and try and make every decision for the betterment of the Harder Pull United Football Club. We will give everything and, and we just hope through the, you know, we're not going to sit here and, and, and promise we're going to do this and that, that would be wrong. There's always going to be frustrations from supporters, we understand that, but the only thing I can say that hopefully reassures them, and it's I'm working closely with John every day, is brilliant to work with, is the fact that we will give 100% in every way, shape and form, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, to try and make sure we put the football club back where it should be. You know, you look at the fan base, everything it's got about it, you know, and again, I'm saying the same thing to you that I've spoken to Middlesbrough and them clubs, Sunderland, your Newcastles, that, you know, we, we, we want to achieve, we want to get back. Um, and and it, I think this, you know, especially locally, I think we need to be in the Football League because we're just such a big club not to be. And, and hopefully through the work that everybody puts in, um, and that includes, you know, from, from board, from myself to the staff, to the office staff, to the tea lady, to the cleaner, through the supporters, you know, being that 12th man on a match day, everybody playing their part. Hopefully we can go and achieve and, and, and be right up there this season. Darren, thank you so much. Thanks. A special episode being the first episode meant a special guest, but thank you everyone for joining us here. We're hoping everything goes right to get John Askey, the gaffer, here for the second episode. That was Branching Out, sponsored by Long Branch Hopes. Mm -hmm.